Hi guys, Overarch here, and today I'm going to be giving you guys some tips for Battletech. So this is a updated video to the previous Battletech tips video I did before, this time with even more tips. So let's just get right into it. Number one is turn on show UI during attacks and options. It makes the game feel so much more alive when you can see in real time where your shots are hitting the enemy and vice versa. So you're more aware of what's happening and if the enemy is vulnerable on one arc, it just generally increases your game awareness and knowledge a lot. Number two is that evasion is amazing. Your mech should almost always be moving unless they have bulwark. Number three, likewise, be sure to strip off your enemy, your enemy's evasion. Multi-target fire and sensor lock is great for this. Support weapons and melee ignore evasion as well, so keep your light mechs out of punching range of larger mechs. Number four, pay attention to where your enemy's weapons are located. If the enemy has an especially dangerous weapon mounted on its arm, or has most of its armor stripped off on that side, you can focus fire that side by firing from the, that side. So for example, let's say the enemy has a Centurion that mounts an AC-10 on its right side. Well, if you get to the right side of it and fire on that arc, all of your attacks will be landing on the arm, uh, right torso, or right leg. So that helps you quickly focus down and eliminate that potentially very dangerous weapon. Number five, focus fire the enemy. Enough said, but try not to overkill it. We're going to talk about this a little bit more in the future. Uh, remember, even damaged mechs can still cause a lot of damage with death from above or melee. So use your best judgment as to uh, if you should focus something down and potentially overkill it. Number six, using brace completely removes stability damage. Given how prevalent LRMs right now in the meta, this isn't necessarily a bad option if your mech's about to tip over. Number seven, light mechs are super vulnerable to melee, so I often will outfit them with long range weapons and let them dance around the outskirts of the fight, plinking away at the enemy and knocking out their evasion tokens. This is the primary job of light mechs, scouting and removing evasion. Number eight, Remember that evasion tokens refresh when a unit moves, so if your mech is in a safe position or still has its evasion up, delaying your action isn't necessarily a bad idea. For example, if I know the enemy medium is about to get its turn, my light will reserve its action. That way, it can engage and strip off evasion or sensor lock them after they move. Number nine, mounting weapons on arm, weapons mounted on arms get an accuracy bonus but are, as I mentioned earlier, a bit more vulnerable to getting hit or focused down. So it's kind of a trade-off. You know, Do you want to mount your most deadly and dangerous weapons on the arms so they get more accuracy, or do you want to put them in the torso where they're more protected? Another great thing to consider is that if a mech loses its head or center torso, it's dead anyway. So there's no reason not to put weapons in those slots. Number 10, it's common to mount ammo in the same location as the weapon. This can, give, this can give you a good idea of where the enemy keeps their ammo so you can focus your fire on it and get that bonus damage from ammo detonation. For example, the Centurion with an AC-10 like I used before will probably mount that AC-10 ammo in the same arm. So focusing down that arm with a call shot or by using firing arcs not only knocks out the dangerous autocannon, but also gives bonus damage from the ammo detonation. And this is something you should also consider too when building your own mechs, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, uh, is that if you put the ammo in the same spot as the weapon, that means that there's only one location that if destroyed will knock out that weapon. Whereas if you put it in a different location, now that's two spots now that if destroyed will knock out that weapon. So if I have the AC-10 ammo, in the right torso and the AC-10 in the left arm, if I lose either my right torso or left arm, I can no longer shoot the AC-10. So that's why ammo is often grouped with the weapon that it's uh, meant to be fired from. Aye, aye. Number 11 is that rotation does not disable bulwark. So you can rotate to your heart's desire and still keep that damage reduction from bulwark. Number 12, if you haven't encountered an SRM carrier in the campaign yet, count yourself lucky. 
It goes without saying to stay out of range of these things, and you should always scout out vehicles from a distance before closing. Uh, if you do see them, focus fire these things off the battlefield. They are cancer. 13. Reserve is super powerful. One of my favorite tactics is to reserve all four of my mechs when the enemy is still undetected, and then the first mech to come into sight gets blasted by all four of my mechs. This can catch an unsuspecting player off guard. Number 14. Control shift u will remove the UI when you're viewing a mech and give you a pretty great view of it. This is especially useful in the mech bay. 15. Lights with plus one initiative are surprisingly good. It means that since the game tries to alternate player movement, even if you have a tie in initiative four, the enemy will go first. This seems bad, but is actually good. You want the enemy to make the first move, as it allows you to prevent the enemy from refreshing that mech's evasion pips. So if you see the enemy move a mech, that means that the, the evasion pips they have now are the evasion pips they're uh, gonna have until their next turn. So you can absolutely unload with all four of your mechs on them, strip off those evasion pips, and hopefully quickly take them out. Number 16 is that you can usually get away with removing some rear armor from your mechs, especially your fire support mechs, since they're unlikely to get flanked while fighting at long distance. 17. Likewise, be, a, be aware that many custom mech builds will remove some rear armor for more tonnage, so if your enemy is in close, try to circle around them. Uh, 18. And this is kind of piggybacking off the last tip. If the enemy has an exposed component in their front, flanking behind them may not be the best option. Consider attacking the front to finish off that area that is in structure, rather than having to chip away at the rear armor as well. Number 19. This one is actually simple. Focus fire the enemy and remove their mechs from the battlefield. We talked about this a little bit previously, but deciding on which enemy to focus fire isn't quite such an easy decision. You should try to figure out what mech is both the most dangerous and most likely to go down. You might not want to pour all of your fire into that 1000 ar or 1000 armor point atlas because uh, it's going to take it a while to go down. That cent uh, the centurion next to it or the catapult behind it might be better choices for your fire. So your goal should be to pour all your firepower into a single enemy mech while preventing them from doing the same to you. So even if you recognize a mech that's more vulnerable, let's say that catapult behind him, if you can only get two of your mechs to engage it, you actually might want to shoot at the Atlas because then you can have all four of your mechs engage the Atlas and hopefully take it down a bit faster. That's just something to consider. And I really can't give you like an ultimate guide. I can't give you a tip that's going to tell you when to shoot what because uh well that it's so situational i can't predict what situation you're going to be in number 20 build your own lances and mechs many of the stock mechs are well rounded but can be further specialized into their battlefield roles for example uh, one of the stock catapults mounts a needless amount of jump jets for an lrm boat you can strip them off and add additional heat sinks or weapons for even more of a punch the stock lances are also not very efficient, in my opinion, and needlessly specialized. So once you get the basics of the game down, go through and make your own. For more inf information on lance and mech design, I actually have a tutorial series on it, which is currently linked in the top right corner of your screen. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you have your own tips for Battletech, please leave them down in the comment section below. I am very interested in learning more about the game myself. So, uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time. Bye.